curious about any maybe prior relationship you had with Isaiah Wilson. And then also, I know um, you spoke with Coach Pittman about him. I'm curious what that conversation was like and uh, I guess just what you learned about Isaiah. Yeah, um, I always try to build a bond with the guys at Georgia. Um, we have a close-knit group. We have a lot of um, dogs in the NFL, so I try to reach out to guys throughout college. And I always went back every spring to – sit in the meetings and just kind of see what they're being coached and then stay around and watch a couple of practices. So that's how I got to know Isaiah and Coach Pittman. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Man, just two two quick ones. One, has your power been out for a good stretch? I was going to ask you about that when you got it back, and then I had a football question as well. Yeah, we're still out of power. Um, Got a great teammate who's not staying in Nashville right now, so we're able to stay at his house. Um, Tanner Hill has uh, came in clutch for us because it got a little cold yesterday. So we did, we roughed it out for three days. So last night we got to come over here and get some hot water and a little TV, actually. And then one from a training standpoint, I, I think I saw a video of you doing some pretty unique stuff in your driveway. What, what's the craziest stuff you've done? to try to stay in shape and, and get good workouts in during uh, the pandemic? Yeah, um, I, I do a Zoom workout every morning at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, try to get in there and work out before our kids get up. So we have four guys on there that I have a trainer in there, so I'm going through a program. Then mainly it's just, it's just trying to be innovative on how to run because you don't have a field like you normally have. So I'm using, uh, I have a pedal time bike that I use that a couple times a week. Bought a sled that I'm able to push in the yard. Um, running sprints on the driveway through the neighborhood. So I try to get up early and do it so I don't um, have a whole bunch of people out there watching me. Uh, Teresa Walker. Ben, with all that you're doing there, uh, has the Titans sent you anything specifically to help you with these workouts or to monitor the workouts uh, to help them, you know, as you go through this virtual off season? Yeah, we have a we have a guideline and plan that's put together for everybody, so you're able to follow that. Any specific equipment? I have a whole weight room in my garage, so I have literally everything that I've put together because either I used it in the off seasons in the past or my wife's used it. So I've had everything and the stuff I didn't have. Um, we were able to have a, a lot of amount of money to purchase and they would refund us on purchases. John Glennon. Hey Ben, um, just wonder if you could expand maybe a little bit on the, uh, on the Isaiah Wilson front, I guess, um, just from what we've learned of him so far, pretty lively uh, uh, personality and, and pretty unique uh, body frame also. W what are your impressions of, uh, of Isaiah Wilson kind of on both fronts as a, as a player and a person? Um, can't wait to have him in our group. Um, he's a big guy and that's the thing is a young guy, you usually get the mold guys like that, they're in the building. Um, you're able to work with them on the field and in the meeting room, and we're not able to do that right now. So it's going to come down to a guy like that with his character, and he's going to have to work on his own and do as much as he can to, to try to catch up and be a part of this group. We had a good year last year, and we have about everybody returning. So we're looking forward to this, and we can't wait to have a guy like that in our room and just be able to help him and mold him as much as we can. Uh, Terry? Uh, ben, I know that in the past and maybe still, you, you've been involved a lot with as the team's player rep, with the Players Association and all. As everything unfolds with all the COVID-19 stuff, what, what have been some of your responsibilities as far as relaying things to your teammates and with the Players Association and, and the team? Yeah, um, Dennis Kelly's our rep. And that's what we – he sends everything to our group message. And we're able to, if young guys have questions, we try to explain it. So I make sure I go into detail and read everything they're sending out. Try to send on phone calls to, cause guys are curious and don't understand this process. So I'm trying to help them as much as possible because I know some of these young guys have a lot going on. They're trying to figure out, find a place to live, find a place to train. So anything I can do to help them 
and kind of guide them. And if it's money wise, if it's how to set up a schedule for them, how to get in a rhythm. So I'm trying to do anything I can to help them that way. Uh, Johnny Franks. Good afternoon, Ben. You know, every year is part of the process, especially with the offensive line, developing that chemistry with new bodies being added to the roster. Uh, this off season certainly presents its own set of challenges. How are you and the leaders of that offensive line dealing with that chemistry issue? Yeah, we have meetings uh, four times a week. We're a really close group. Um, we text every day. We, we're on phone calls together. And we did some it – it takes a while to build that bond. And we have a lot of guys coming back. We have, I think, our whole offense almost coming back. So that's, that's good to have. But last year wasn't good enough, and we're trying to go from good to great. And we're trying to take that next step, and we're trying to do everything possible through these Zoom meetings and working out on our own and trying to stay involved. Um, with each other's lives um, through Zoom and through just a phone call to build that bond. And I think we have a group that can do that. And we know the guys we have in our room that you can reach out to if anybody needs help. People are literally all over the U.S. right now staying and working out. So we're not all in one city. So that makes it hard. Uh, John Burton. Yeah, Ben, uh, just a quick question about uh, the schedule getting released today. Um, you know, obviously the fans are excited about it. I'm curious, do you or your teammates get excited about, you know, the 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 revealing of the schedule? Obviously, you know who you're playing and and where, but to get the days and times, is that an, is this an exciting day for you guys with the schedule coming out? Um, we like to see the the times if you get a primetime game, if you get a something like that, but other than that, we know who we're playing. We know that usually the big games that we got to win. We got to. We're trying to win our division this year, taking that next step um, to play home playoff games. But you know, you, you kind of know who you're going to play. You know, home and away, but you just don't know the date. So the schedule really is not that big of a deal to us, besides knowing when the bye week is. Thanks, man. David Beauclair. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, Paul Kaharfi. Ben, um, so much is made of, of building that offensive line chemistry uh, throughout the entire offseason and into the season uh, as you kind of stand side by side and go through the steps and, and all of that. How can you make up for, for not physically being side by side? Uh, what kind of things do you, do you do in those meetings that can kind of make up for that? What do you think you can do when you are reassembled to maybe make up for the time you don't have together like that right now? Right. Um, that's what we're able to do right now in meetings. We're able to break down things and go to the fine details to make sure everybody's on the same page and make sure everybody's seeing it through the same set of eyes to really break down. Even if we had a good run, a 20 or 30 yard game, how can we really critique it and make sure it's that play could go to the house or how every play is comes down to a certain block or it can go back to this and how your block impacts on every play. So they're really doing a good job of breaking it down and taking it step by step. So we know the details and you know what the person beside you is expecting you to do and how you can hold each other accountable that way. Uh, Corey Curtis. Hey, Ben. Hope everything is well with you. I just wanted to ask about uh, the, the return to the facility and when that happens. You know, you've got a family at home for when you're done at work every day. How much testing uh, do you want there to be before you're willing or, or happy about getting back on the practice field? Yeah, um, we trust the NFL and the NFL um, PA. To, they're not going to put us in a situation that jeopardizes our family. So we trust them, and I know if it's not safe, they're not going to have us back there. Uh, Luke? Hey, Ben, I know you spent four years in Houston with Jonathan Joseph. Just wondering your thoughts on and what kind of a leader and teammate you are going to get in him. Yeah, um, great guy, great family man, even better player, and a guy that you can really lean on in the locker room. He was one of my um, good friends there. I still talk to him a couple times a week. I actually, we were on the phone call last night together, and, and we're still in group messages together. Um, tremendous guy. Um, very intelligent guy because for playing that long in the year, you really got to be on top of your game mentally to know the ins and out of the game. So um, heck of a guy we got there, and I'm happy he's on our team. Chris Harris. 
Hey Ben, you mentioned about the uh, when you're talking about the schedule about the primetime games. How important is that to you guys, given what you were able to accomplish last year? And then also with the schedule being released tonight, uh, does that give I, I don't know some some definitive uh, something to shoot for, given that everything right now has just kind of been up in the air? Um, for me, I love playing at twelve o'clock. I love playing. I like a routine, but. Um, it is good. It's good for the fans. It's good for the organization because when you're getting those games, that means you're winning games. You're winning um, big games that matter. So that comes with it. So if you're not winning, you're usually slotted in the 12 o'clock slot. But we had a good year last year, and that's last year. So if we want to keep getting bigger games and so all that, we got to keep winning. And that's our whole mindset is winning no matter what time we're playing, if it's a Thursday or a Monday or a Sunday, to go out there and win. That's all that matters to us. And then just uh, go ahead. The fact that it is being released tonight, uh, the schedule is that give you something to, to work towards, given that everything is, is virtual and ambiguous right now. Um, I didn't even know it was getting released tonight. So, as an offensive line, we're just doing our job, and we're just excited when we get to get back to work um, and get to see everybody. And whenever we have a game, we'll show up that day and be ready to roll. Uh, John Glennon had a follow up. Yeah, Ben, I just wanted to, uh, to follow up a little bit on the offseason uh, theme. You know, we saw last year Nate Davis missed a, a lot of training camp and, you know, it took a while to for him to work into the starting lineup. Um, how difficult is it, you know, maybe for a guy like Wilson, or a rookie especially, um, if some of the offseason is missed, uh, the, the challenge of, um, of, you know, moving quickly into the lineup despite missing time? Yeah, um, that's going to come down to him working and competing when we're able to get back to work and – that's the thing. Um, as an offensive lineman, you just got to do what you control, what you can control. Don't try to do anything that you can't do and just do what you're asked to do on each play. And when it comes down to Isaiah and taking that next step, all he can really learn right now, he can really get into the playbook and learn as much as possible. So when we're able to get on the field, he can at least he's knowing what he's doing and they can coach up his technique and stuff like that. So he's getting a great opportunity to learn the playbook and spend a lot of time in that and knowing it like the back of his hand before he has to go out there and perform it. Uh, last one, uh, Corey Curtis. Hey, Ben, we heard from a, a lot of the owners and GMs uh, about how much they appreciated the time they've gotten to spend at home this spring with their families. Have, have, how much have you appreciated the time with, with your family and the closeness that you've had? Yeah, it's been great. Um, really getting to sit down and do a schedule. I, that's why I make sure I get up early so I'm able to spend the whole day with my family because you never know when these opportunities um, you're going to get like this. This is a, a unique off season, and I want to make sure I'm taking full advantage of it. I'm able to get my lift in and then spend the rest of the day with them and to show my daughter, hey, I'm here and, and I want to do everything I can possibly do with her. All right, Ben, I really appreciate it. Uh, that'll do us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Ben. Stay healthy. Thank you, Ben. Hope the power comes on. <laughs> Me too.